What's the word, y'all? What an amazing day for hoops. We got the NBA Draft Lottery. We find out that the San Antonio Spurs are going to get Victor Wibanyama after every single team was interested. We know where he's finally going. And then we got Lakers versus Nuggets game one. And it lived up to all of the hype. Even after the first quarter or two, it looked like it was going to be a blowout. The Lakers made some adjustments. We're going to talk about that. I am ready for six more of those games. I will say. But before we do that, let me tell you about our sponsor, Prize Picks. Hit the link in the description down to the Prize Picks app and use code Kenny because you're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Price picks is daily fantasy that is just you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite or at least favorite athletes. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists. You see the number and you decide if you think the athlete is going to have more or less than that number. It's playoff time, so they're doing a lot of promos. For example, game seven, that was Celtics versus 76ers. Joel B had a free spot because he only had to score one point for you to get that in the green. And obviously he did that plus about 14 more. And my entry that day was close to being a perfect entry. James Harden missed out by one rebound, and if they won lose and by 100 points, maybe he would have got more tick and got that last rebound. But it is what it is because I flex played, which means that I still walked out of there in the green. So hit the link, download Price Picks, and use code Kenny so they can match your deposit up to $100. Please play responsibly. All right, I'm going to start off with the game because that is what's topical. That is what just wrapped up um, the Nuggets survive the comeback. Now, through the first two and a half quarters, it felt like Nuggets, Nuggets, Nuggets. They came out originally with all of the energy all of the hustle, and all of the heart. And it felt like through the first couple series for the LA Lakers, those were some of the places that they were winning. They were winning on the hustle plays. They were winning on the rebound attempt. And in this one, at least early on, it was a lot of Jokic. I mean, through the first half, Jokic had 19, 16, and 7. I don't know what the number was. It was something ridiculous where he looked like the best player in the world. It was a lot of Anthony Davis straight up, and then every once in a while, you'll get a little double team. And, and the goalie Jokic is one of the most difficult players to guard in the NBA because he is such a wizard when it comes to his passing where he's looking two to three steps ahead, that like throwing a consistent double at him doesn't make a lot of sense because he trusts his teammates more than anybody in ball and he knows that they're going to hit shots eventually. So in those times they were bringing those double teams, he's just kicking it out, boom, you got Brucey e. Brown running the floor or hitting the open shot. And Jokic dominated through three quarters. And then the fourth quarter came around. Actually, what the Lakers did didn't start in the fourth quarter. It started in the third, where the offense started to turn around. I think they scored 36 points on 70% shooting. Like, the offense for the Lakers really got up to play in that third quarter. But they were in so much of a hole that even them scoring 30-something points on 70% shooting only got the lead down to, like, six, down to, like, eight. And then the fourth quarter came around. And this is where things got interesting. Because Nikola Jokic didn't score in the fourth quarter into the last minute or so. And those are the free throws and the intentional foul. So what happened? He was the most dominant player in basketball for the first three and a half quarter or three quarters. What happened in the fourth quarter? Darvin Ham made an in-game adjustment that is something that you don't see as often in the NBA. It usually takes, okay, game one, Nikola killed us, so let's start something new in game two. Darvin Ham made two big adjustments that not just neutralized or slowed down Nikola Jokic, but it made it more tough for Jamal Murray. Early in this game, there was a lot of possessions where uh, Dennis Schroeder had the assignment on Jamal Murray and the, the intel was go under. Go under, go under, go under. And Jamal Murray was shooting the skin off of that. And they really took advantage of the going under gameplay. And there was one specific play that I remember where he went under a screen and he had no help, no hedge, no nothing. And Dennis Schroeder looked back at his guys like, what's going on? And then after that possession, there was no more going under. He fought through every single one of those screens, and it just made it more tough for Jamal Murray. And the biggest thing, the thing that they, I think that they can bring it to game two through whatever that can make the Lakers fans feel like, hey, we lost game one, but I saw a lot of good stuff, is to switch Anthony Davis off with Nikola Jokic. Anthony Davis, as we know it, is, is one of the best defensive players of all. We just saw for two series in a row where he was dominant in the paint. So the original idea was like, okay, Anthony Davis is one of the most dominant players in basketball on the defensive side. Nicole Jokic is the most dominant offensive player, one of the most dominant offensive players. We're just going to let them go head to head, and we're going to trust our guy AD to get as many stops as possible. Did not get a lot of stops, realistically. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of people in NBA in the current NBA that can guard Jokic one-on-one and cause him to miss a lot of shots you know what I'm saying but what they did was they allowed Anthony Davis to switch on to the Jeff Greens of the world to the Aaron Gordons of the world and let Anthony Davis roam and with that roaming and Rui Hachimura kind of playing the fire hydra PJ Tucker roller just guarding Jokic one-on-one and then allowing Anthony Davis to come over and to help it muddled up the game enough when Nikola Jokic did not get 
and he clean looks at the basket for an entire quarter. It's very similar to what um, to what Joe Mazzulla ended up doing in Game Six and Game Seven, where when he started Robert Williams, he put Robert Williams on a non-shooter or what the team decided to be a non-shooter and let him just muck things up. And that's why Joel Embiid couldn't. One of the reasons why Joel Embiid couldn't do much, or one of the reasons there was not a lot of lanes for James Harden to get to the basket. And when Anthony Davis was roaming, he was everywhere. He's got blocks. You know, a lot of things won't show up on the stat sheet, but his presence was well known. And now this offense that in the first three quarters was looking legendary. I mean, they have, if I'm not mistaken, in the playoffs, the number one offense of the four teams remaining. Uh, actually, I ain't got to move that. That's a fact. They've had the number one offense of the four teams remaining in the playoffs alone. And that fourth quarter, it got a lot of more stagnation and a lot more, uh-oh, what's happening type possessions. And on the other side of the ball, the Lakers are going on their run. Austin Reeves hit a couple shots here and there. LeBron James and Anthony Davis are getting a good whistle. And boom, that lead that was at 1.20-something is now down three, and we got a game where the people in Ball Arena are like, yo, if we blow game one, we in some huge, huge trouble. Luckily enough, um, they got a couple possessions where LeBron James settled for a three, a, a little FU three that he missed. Austin Reeves got another open look on the wing in the same spot that he had two of them like two possessions ago. He missed that shot. And ultimately, the, the Nuggets ended up getting this win. But the reason I'm so excited for the rest of this series is because I know Mike Malone is not going to take that adjustment sitting down. They got it out of there with the win. They're undefeated at Ball Arena. So that, that's a dub. But even Mike Malone said after the third quarter, hey, they score X amount of points, so X amount of shooting. If if we don't buckle down, they're going to take this game. And they almost did. So I know Mike Malone's going to have some type of game plan to kind of scheme against the idea of having Anthony Davis roam. I just don't know exactly what that means. Because in this one, you did see Jeff Green take a three when Anthony Davis was roaming, and he hit the three. I also saw a lot of Aaron Gordon kind of just sitting in the dunker spot when he was guarded by Anthony Davis, and that just makes it even more difficult. I know that Aaron Gordon is not some type of stretch where he's going to sit at the three-point line and hit six threes if you leave him open, but he has to make himself more of a threat to make it so that Anthony Davis can't just park himself down in that paint to keep the game open for Jokic or the drivers or things like that. But what the, what the Nuggets need to try to do maybe in game two is get back that energy and get back that those fast break opportunities they got in the first half because they were running man Bruce Brown uh, Jamal Murray they just had so many possessions where I'm watching as a neutral fan like what are the Lakers gonna get back on D like what are they doing you know they came out with that energy and that energy may have not lasted the entire 48 minutes but those spurts of energy was enough that even though you were gassed and almost out of it for the last couple you had a little cushion I want this series to be long man I can't lie to you bro that game was too good, and it had no business being that good. The Lakers had no business coming back, but they put together stops, and they got the offense going. There's a couple plays in this one where Jokic... No, no, the shot the shot that, that everybody's going to talk about for Nikola Jokic is the one where the, the game or the quarter's about to end, and he just hoists up a shot where it looks so unorthodox, but for Jokic, that's a pretty normal thing. And even Anthony Davis, who was guarding him, couldn't even believe the idea of that ball going in, and he just had to smile and walk it off. Like, like that's the type of gamesmanship that I'm kind of into because what is he supposed to do there? And even to start the quarter, Jamal Murray was guarded by LeBron James. And Bron, you know, you like me and the guys always say, He's sitting in that chair. He was in his stance. Like, I love when a player just like, okay, I don't normally get like this, but we need this stop. And LeBron was sitting in that chair. And Jamal Murray threw up some BS and it fell in. And my boy Mike, who was watching this game on Twitch, he was like, man, if they didn't have those two shots, whether they was luck or not, if they ain't had those two shots, this game is in overtime right now. And that's a fact. It was a six-point game, and that's two threes that they made. The Lakers also did a really good job of winning the non-Jokic minutes. Like that, if there's in, if there is a kryptonite to the Denver Nuggets, it is their ability to keep a lead <laughs> or just maintain okay basketball when Nikola Jokic is off the floor. And that happened again today. KCP was great. Um, I think Bruce Brown, again, gave really good minutes. Rui Hachimura gave really good minutes. He, like, again, on the defensive side when he was guarding Jokic 101 and then waiting for the help. Uh, th this is this is going to be a well-coached matchup, and I'm excited to see what each coach does next to see uh, if this is going to go seven. Is it going to go five? Is going whatever, you know. The lottery was today. Every single year for the past couple years, I've been – I stream the lottery, right? Because for the most part, my team is in it. Uh, so I want to see if we going to magically win the lottery and get the first pick. And we had the year where we jumped up, and that was to get Patrick Williams. I thought that maybe this could be another year. 1.8% chance for the Bulls. It ended up going to the Spurs. And I'm excited for Spurs fans, like, because earlier in the season, they went, poof, 
They started off super decent, right? I think they were six and seven to start off the year, and they ended up being six and seventeen right after that. Uh, we kind of understood what their agenda was, and I didn't even remember saying this. Somebody tweeted me a video of after the Jamal Murray trade because there there are people out there critical of the Jamal Murray trade because. Um, not Jamal Murray, DeJounte Murray trade, my fault. Um, because he had another year left on his contract and you didn't get a single real player. He's got a lot of draft picks. And in my video, when we were talking about these trades, I say, hey, there's a dude in this draft class named Victor Wibanyama. I pronounced his name wrong back then, but Victor Wibanyama. And a 14% chance to get that dude is way better than whatever team you're going to put together with DeJounte Murray at the helm. And somebody just tweeted me that video of me saying that. And I'm like, damn, sometimes Kenny be spitting. You know what I'm saying? And here they are. They went through a whole season of just, hey, what was the brightest part? Jeremy looks cool. Um, J uh, Zach Collins looked good. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the highlight of their season, especially with coming off the primo stuff and all of that. So, for them to win the lottery, um, it's a good franchise, bro. A franchise that doesn't normally do this, you know? And that's why I don't think it's rigged. I, I just think that the, the basketball gods are in the favor of San Antonio because they... The low-key, the San Antonio Spurs, at least in the last 30 years, have tanked twice. And one of those times, they got Tim Duncan. And the other time, they get a victim with Yama. Now, of course, Vic still has to come to the league and prove that he's worth all of the hype. But it's, ha you know, it's happening. You know, it's happening. And he looked excited on the broadcast. They had Brian Windhorst in France at 2 a.m. He looked dead tired. And Victor's excited. You know what I'm saying? Like, it looked like genuine excitement. Well, I don't know who would have got that same response if it was any other organization outside of the Spurs. One thing that the Spurs have is that's a really good infrastructure, really good coaching. Obviously, Greg Popovich, who, is he ever going to retire? I doubt it. Um, good infrastructure, good coaching. They ran well. And now they got a, a, a legit, like, we use the word generational talent very loosely in sports nowadays. According to what I've seen, this dude is a legitimate generational talent. I feel bad for Pistons fans after 17 wins and falling out of the top four. Like, that is the worst case scenario. You know what I'm saying? I mean, again, you don't need the first overall pick to draft well and get a superstar player for sure. But you won 17 games because you won Victor Wimanyama. And now you're going to settle for some other guy. I don't know. I don't know enough about this draft class. But some other guy that's not Victor Wimanyama. He might. He could be better than Victor Wimanyama if you do it right. But I guess I don't know. Um, I'm excited to see what the Trailblazers do with their pick. I think that was another little wrinkle because there were some rumors before everything that, like, they would be willing to trade that pick away to help Dame. And now it's a, it's a top three pick. You know what I'm saying? That's a valuable asset. It's not Victor Wimanyama, but it might be Brandon Miller or School Henderson, who are two really good players. I met Brandon Miller today. I'm a fan now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he can be, t I think he can be special in this league. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. And around the edge is the team that weren't in the top four or maybe right outside. I'm excited to see what they think, what they pick. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, I appreciate y'all watching. Um, I do want to let y'all know I am going to Philadelphia for a couple days. So if you don't see videos from me for game one of the next series or game two of this series, that's why I'm, I'm probably on the road. But y'all know once I get back, we're going to talk.